Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Lasermatic MK2 laser engraving and cutting machine from Rolly. If you're familiar with my channel, you may have seen the video I did for the first version of the Lasermatic 10 back about nine months ago. Back then, I called it the nicest laser I have ever used. So is this MK2 upgrade worth it? Do I think it is still one of the nicest laser engravers I have ever used? Well, let's find out. First, I wanted to thank Leo over at Rolly for reaching out and offering me this new machine for my honest review. There are affiliate links in the description that do help out the channel if you choose to use them, but they do not sway my opinion one way or the other. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing you will find with this machine is that unlike its predecessor, it comes almost completely assembled. You no longer have to install the gantry and the acrylic enclosure plates. You simply have to remove a few small screws and a metal bar that holds the gantry in place. The metal bar that was being used was so nice and cleanly machined that I thought it was supposed to be used somewhere else on the machine, but it's literally just there for support while shipping, which just goes to show you the insane level of quality over at Rolly. The only other assembly that you have to do is to attach the laser module to the gantry. You do have to remove a few screws on the gantry itself to unlock it. The gantry also has a laser height extender already installed on the machine. You can remove this for the regular operation of the laser. This would only need to be used if you want to engrave on objects much further down on the bottom surface, which I'll talk about in a second. Be sure to hold on to the screws that you remove off of this part, since they will be used to attach your laser module. The laser module came in a different box for me, along with an air assist and a rotary attachment. From the website, I could see that there are actually three configurations of the laser module that you can choose for this machine. A 10 watt, 20 watt, and 30 watt version. My particular machine came with the 20 watt version. The laser module bolts right onto the adjustable height attachment of the gantry. The laser is then plugged in on the side, and then you need to attach the tube for the air assist on the other side. The laser module has an air assist nozzle built in for easy use. The other feature of the 20 and 30 watt versions of this laser is a switch on the side to change the laser from a 20 or 30 watt down to a 10 watt laser. Essentially, you're turning off some of the laser beams in the module to improve the detail that you can achieve with the laser. A better way to explain this, you're not really working with one 20 watt or one 30 watt laser. The power of the laser is made up of multiple five watt diodes that make up the power. So a 20 watt laser is four different five watt beams merged into one and the 30 watt is six beams. When you have multiple beams, it makes your spot size larger and thus you have a less detailed point to engrave with. I like to compare it to Sharpies where you can get a thinner line with a fine tip versus a regular marker. The same thing applies here. By turning off the extra beam, you can choose a finer point and in turn a more detailed engraving. No longer do you have to swap out the laser head altogether to achieve that more precise spot. Another upgrade over the previous model is now with the air assist that comes with the machine. Rolly listened to their customers and the air assist can now be automatically controlled per layer through the software. If using a program like Lightburn, which I would recommend as the software of choice, you can turn the air assist on or off based on whether you're cutting or engraving. The only thing that it doesn't do that I would like to have seen was to have a variable speed where the air pump is always on, at least a little trickle to keep the lens clean. The laser module does have a pretty nice fan at the top that does help clear some of the smoke while engraving, but it would have been nice to have a slight trickle out of the nozzle itself. The fan on the top of the module also leads me to really the only area that I think could be improved on the machine. Currently, the fan on the laser module and the exhaust fan on the back of the machine uh, are always on when the machine is on. They never turn off and both are fairly powerful, so they aren't exactly quiet. I had even reached out to Leo over at Rolly to ask about this and was told that currently the module and exhaust fan are always on, 
but it's something they may adjust for future upgrades of the machine. He had even told me that another user had created a switch for the back fan to turn off when the laser completes the job since the laser is set to move back and out of the way after the job finishes. That might be something I look into in the future. The Lasermatic 10 machine again comes fully enclosed with laser safety acrylic panels on all sides for a great view of the machine in operation. These newer panels on this machine also offer an upgrade feature over the last version, and this is a new space for laser pass-throughs. You can see them here in the front and back of the machine. By simply removing the cutout slots, you could slide material roughly 400 millimeters by 30 millimeters tall, or 16 inches by about an inch and a quarter. It's not huge, but does allow you the opportunity to engrave on those longer pieces if needed. On the top of the machine, just like in the original, there is a camera that can be used in Lightburn to take an image of your work area and place your designs directly onto those pictures to help line everything up. I will talk about that in just a moment. Mounted on either side, again, are two LED lights to once again help with seeing everything that is happening with your jobs. On the front of the enclosure are upgraded switches for the safety feature of turning the laser off when the lid is open while in use. Before these were limit switches that might have been slightly off, and now they seem to be some sort of more reliable inductive switches. The gantry that the laser moves on, again, are linear rails for some nice, fast, and accurate movements. The machine can operate at up to 30,000 millimeters per minute, which is pretty fast. Again, you will not really be engraving much at that speed, but it is nice to know that it can actually move that speed. Rolly also again paid great attention to the cable management of the machine, which is still really well thought out and clean. The workable area of the machine is 410 millimeters on the X and 390 millimeters on the Y, so you still have a lot of room to work with. Just below that, you will find the honeycomb that helps with cutting However, the honeycomb comes with another feature that I have not seen on any of my other lasers, and it is one of the most welcome additions I have found with this new MK2 version. If you look at the honeycomb, you will see that there are markings on the side in both metric and standard sizes. That's not the impressive part. Many other lasers have that. What is impressive is what you can finally do with those. On the honeycombs I've used in the past, they have all had the markings really as a measuring tool and nothing else. They were more for show and measuring your pieces rather than anything really useful. Well, if you turn the honeycomb over, you will see that there's holes on the back as well as these little pegs on the risers in the machine. What this does is place the honeycomb in an exact spot so now it can be used essentially as a grid system for absolute coordinates on your machine. The home position of the laser exactly corresponds with the zero, 00 spot on the honeycomb. That is huge. I've not seen that on any of my other machines, and it's a very welcome and long overdue feature that I hope others take note of and incorporate into their machines. On the last machine, I had added a spoil board to be able to use absolute coordinates with the machine, but now that it's built into the honeycomb, it's not needed. It also means that I can use absolute coordinates whether I'm cutting or engraving, which I've never been able to do before on any machine. Below the honeycomb, we can see the pegs for the rotary attachment that I'll touch on in a moment, but Rolly also added another wish list item for my last review, and that is a removable base plate for the bottom of the machine. This means if you wanted to engrave an item too large to fit in the machine, you can remove that plate and engrave under it. The size is about 320 millimeters by 410 millimeters. It is also where you would use the laser module extension if you needed to be able to reach down much further with the machine. The LaserMat MK2 is also able to be controlled through Wi-Fi. Now again, like the last version, that really only means that you can save G-code through your program of choice, then send that G-code over to the micro SD card that came with your machine over your Wi-Fi network. This does not mean that you can connect and control the machine through Lightburn using Wi-Fi. You also can only use the camera through the direct USB connection to the computer, so honestly, I don't plan on using the Wi-Fi function that much. Okay, 
So this is all great, but how did it actually perform? Really well, actually. The first thing I wanted to do was set up the camera inside of Lightburn. Again, you can use this machine with free software such as Laser Gerbil, but if you are seriously going to want to do laser engraving and cutting, you're really going to want to buy a Lightburn license. You need the G-Code license that is $60 and worth every penny of it. So I opened up the Lightburn software and then imported the .lbdev file that came on the USB stick that was included with this machine. This already sets you up for many settings you need with your machine. The camera lens information already comes calibrated for you, so you really only need to adjust the camera alignment since the installation of the camera mount could vary to a tiny degree. I ran through the process and aligned the camera. Now, I did want to point out, and it's even mentioned in the user manual, that while using the camera is a nice feature, it can get you pretty close, but it's not a perfect system for accuracy. It's a single lens that is getting warped and skewed to try to display a perfect overhead shot of the laser. While it does a decent job, it can be less accurate as it extends to the edges of the frame, since those are the areas furthest away from the lens. This is all to say that while it's a needed feature for odd-shaped items, it's really better to use absolute coordinates whenever possible if you need highly accurate results. I ran the camera alignment and then placed this gingerbread cutting board onto the machine. I captured the image to help me place the text on it. It did a pretty decent job and helped me to align the work pretty accurately. To set the height for the laser, you use this small wedge to measure the proper focal height. You use the different heights based on whether you are cutting or engraving and at what thickness you are cutting if that is the job that you are working on. So with the height set, I ran this job at 4,200 millimeters at 100% power using the 10 watt laser switch to get better details. Also, all of the tests with this machine are gonna be Christmas related since this is my last review and I'm working on it right before the holidays. This cutting board looked nice, but I ended up going over the design for a few more passes since this bamboo board isn't the best in the world and has lots of fillers that change the overall way that it engraves. Uh, overall, it was a good first test. Next, I wanted to do some cutting with the machine, so I found this picture frame file online that I will link to in the description. I switched the laser over to the 20 watt and cut everything out at 450 millimeters a minute at 100% power and the air assist on. It did an amazing job of cutting this design out. I ended up updating the design for a little extra layering and was really happy with how it came out. With the air assist on, the wood cut out extremely clean with zero charring on the front or the back. I was very happy with the results and I'm also going to post a link to the 3mm thick basswood that I use for this and a few other items since it really seemed to work well with this machine. I really liked the frame, so I wanted to cut out an even larger piece, so I found this other Christmas cutout and I put it into the machine. It again did an amazing job. Even keeping the laser at 20 watts for the line work still came out extremely nice and clean. It honestly looks like something you would buy at a craft store or in a kit, and so I was very happy with the result. I will also post a link to where you can get this design. On both of these, I had to alter the files to get them to work correctly with the machine, and that was more because they were a different file format that Lightburn couldn't read. So I will post my Lightburn files in the description for anybody who wants them. After this, I wanted to try one of those metal business cards that come in the kit. Again, to keep with the Christmas theme, I decided to engrave Santa. The image came out great, and since I was using a honeycomb for the absolute coordinates, it engraved exactly where I wanted it to. I ran this at 1800 millimeters per minute at 30% power and 318 dpi using the 10 watt laser. It came out pretty nice. I also wanted to run this again on a black business card, but this time I switched the dpi to 254. I ran it again and it still came out pretty nice and detailed, but at much less time since I effectively lowered the resolution. So with the engraving and cutting working well as I expected, I wanted to try out the new rotary attachment that came with my machine. 
The new version of the rotary is now a chuck style rotary instead of the rollers that came on the last version. It comes with different attachments to handle different sizes, as well as a round object attachment and an attachment for rings. The kit also comes with some test pieces, a measuring tape, and then another wish list item that I had from the last review, and that is a bubble level for making sure your tumbler top surface is level. I removed the honeycomb and placed the rotary on the pegs attached to the bottom plate of the laser. This was a feature that I love from the old rotary on the old machine as well, because the pegs ensure that the rotary will always be square to the laser head itself. This means that the tumbler will always rotate exactly perpendicular to the laser module, which is very important for a straight engraving. Another feature that this enables that they also had last time is that with the pegs, you will know exactly where the top of the cup is in relation to the laser coordinates. So they give you some safe positions that you can choose in the move tab to position the laser directly above the cup. This all makes sure your tumblers always come out consistent time after time. I also ended up switching the position of the chuck jaws from the inside of the cup to the outside to have an even more consistent job. All you need to do is place the tumbler in the jaws and then using the level rotate the chuck until the top of the cup is level and then tighten down the chuck pivot. There is also a holder on the other side of the rotary but that is really only needed for larger or heavy objects. After it was set up, I plugged in the rotary into the front board and ran the job at 4,500 millimeters per minute at 75% power and 318 DPI using the 10 watt laser switch. It came out really nice and square. I know what you're thinking, not a Christmas item, wrong. They are Christmas gifts and they turned out great. After that, I wanted to do a longer image. So I ran this Santa image I had purchased off of Etsy on some of that same basswood that I use for the cutout job. This time I utilized the honeycomb to set up the job so it would go to the exact borders of the wood. Now, one thing to bring up here is that when engraving all the way to the very corner of that zero, zero coordinate position, you may run into an issue where depending on your overscan settings, you might trigger the hard limit switches when engraving, specifically at the faster speed. The way that I just avoided that was to shift my image over by 20 millimeters. This still allowed me to accurately position my wood to work with the absolute coordinates and it engraved really nice. I even hit it with some color pencils afterward to really make it a nice item for Christmas. The final job that I ran was another cutting board. This time the cutting board was so large that it didn't fit straight into the machine. So to be able to engrave fully on it, I really needed to utilize the camera to position my work on the machine. I used another SVG that I had purchased off of Etsy. I took the image, lined up the design and burned the image. Again, since the wood of the cutting board was not consistent, I ended up going over it again at a stronger power to really carve into the surface to get a more consistent burn. The problem here has again to do with using the camera over such a large surface area. As you can see, the image did not burn exactly where it was supposed to on the surface. The C and the S of the word Christmas came out much closer to the edges and the star at the top almost went off the wood. This again has to do with the accuracy of the image towards the end of the machine. This also might get affected by the thickness of the board itself. It's much closer to the camera than something like a piece of paper, so it could affect the final image. All of this is to say again that while it gets you pretty close, it's not as accurate as absolute coordinates. So for my overall impressions from this machine, I really am still impressed by the quality and thoughtfulness that went into the design and execution of this machine. It really does a great job both cutting and engraving, and I love the idea of being able to quickly switch between the higher 20 watt and the lower, more detailed 10 watt laser powers. Rolly has even teamed up with Rich over on the Louisiana Hobby Guy YouTube channel to provide people with a laser settings library for giving you a good starting point for the power and speeds for the different materials for the 10 watt laser. Now you will still probably want to run some of your own tests, but a big shout out to Rich for at least getting everyone started. 
I believe he's also working on a 20 watt library as well, which might be available when you see this video. I think that this machine is a new contender for the nicest laser diode machine that I have used. It really was a pleasure to work with. If it was not for the fans always being on, I really wouldn't have anything to even complain about. I wanted to once again thank Leo over at Roy for making a great machine and allowing me to show it to you guys. Again, there are affiliate links in the description if you decide to use them, which does help out the channel, but that's completely up to you. Thanks again for watching, and since this is my last video of the year, I also wanted to share my gratitude for everyone who has watched and supported my channel for another year. If you like this content, please do hit that like button, drop a comment, and consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things Maker. Stay safe, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.